star. <laughs> and Olivia Smoliga. Welcome to the Halloween episode. I am so excited to have Reagan Smith with us for episode four. <laughs> So much um, for having me. You're so welcome. I'm so excited. You're our co-host today because Jay's out of town for mm -hmm. Pan Ams. Mm -hmm. Jay just won the 400 IM yesterday. Yes. yes. So he did amazing. Shout out him. Shout out Captain <laughs> Jay. And I'm so pumped to just be here with you today. Um, I can't take. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I drew this and it honestly looks pretty fire. Yes. Welcome to the Halloween episode. Thank you, thank so, you so much for dressing up. Thank you Love. so much for dressing up. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your, your, I need to turn the air. <laughs> I haven't dressed up for Halloween in a minute. Really? Yeah. Were you something last, you were something really fun last year, right? I was, I was a cow. Oh yeah. Um, what is like your favorite Halloween costume you dressed up uh, um, with? Honestly, I love this. Okay, my freshman year at Stanford. Yeah. Um, have you seen Phineas and Ferb? Yes, oh, I have. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'll post the. I'll have it like right here. Please do. I so loved <laughs> it. I saw it on TikTok. I loved it. Oh, that was so funny. Yeah, because I was Candace, and then the rest of the girls in my class were like the little squirrels. Yeah. And it was so funny. Yeah, that one's a memorable one. But yeah. I like this one too. I love Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just like going all in. I love it. You went all in. All in. You inspired me. You inspired me to go all in. Thank you so much. <laughs> Our co-host needs no introduction. Reagan Smith, a 2020 Olympian, a world champion, a 17-time international medalist. Wow. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty that. sure. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure if my memory serves me correctly, you made your first world's team when you were 15. Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, and it's such a been such a pleasure having you here at ASU. Um, when I first started out here, it was just Haley and I and Ryan. And now we have such an amazing pro group. We talked to Drew uh, two episodes yeah, ago. Yeah. And it was so much fun. Um, how have you been liking ASU? Like, how has it been transitioning into your professional career? It's been so much fun. Yeah. So I've been here for like a year now. And I love it so much yeah. i was really nervous about leaving college you know only getting to do it for one year and like yeah. the dual meet season is fun and everything yeah. and i enjoyed ncs and pac 12s and everything and so sometimes i wish that i could like get to do that more than just once yeah. but i feel like i wouldn't change anything because like yeah. you said this group is so amazing it is, and yeah. i have so much fun every single day it's like yeah. i've never been this motivated to go to practice and um i feel like i'm working the hardest that I've ever worked in my entire life, but at the same time, I'm not taking anything too seriously. Yeah. So it's just the best of both worlds. Like it's so fun, but I feel like I'm getting the most out of it at the same time. I don't yeah. know if you feel the same way. Like it's yeah. just, it's just a different vibe. But I know you had a similar situation at Georgia yeah. with a great pro group, but I think it's so much fun. It's yeah. so much fun. It's so much fun. Like I have to commend you so much on just transitioning into your professional career so seamlessly because when we were talking with uh, Drew and Jay, last episode it was like the transition from college into pro career like that first year is kind of tricky because it's like you're no longer racing for a college team you're just kind of racing for yourself where do you find your greater purpose in that but I feel like you did it so effortlessly and I think it speaks to your maturity and in being on so many international teams at such a young age and I remember watching like several interviews where you were just very upfront about your goals and I think that's actually so um, I don't know if it's like not common, you know, but I think it speaks volumes to be like, I know what I want to do and to know what you want to do at such a young age, I think it's like really awesome. And I think it could lend pretty inspirational to young girls too, where like, I don't know, like, I'll see how it goes, you know, yeah. like maybe, maybe it'll work or maybe sure. whatever. Yeah. Um, so how is that for you? Have you always been like strong willed ever since like 15 year old Reagan on the on the world's team like has it always been like I know exactly what I want and I will I'll get it I really appreciate you saying all that because mm -hmm. it's like I guess what you perceive can be so different from mm -hmm. how you actually feel inside yeah and I guess fake it till you make it right I feel like so many of the decisions I've made in my swimming career and like deciding to go pro I I didn't know if it was the right decision yeah. but I I do feel like people who 
helps me make those decisions like those closest to me my closest friends my family members and they kind of help me feel more confident in my decision yeah and so i think it's definitely important to like have a strong will right and know what you yeah. want know how to chase your goals and yeah. and know the steps that you want to take in order to get there yeah but it's also so okay if you feel kind of lost yes. a little bit too like yes. i don't want anyone to look at me and think that i have it all figured out mm -hmm. right and that like yeah. it was such smooth sailing for me and i just had my my path in front of me and my steps all laid out and i just needed to go step yeah. by step to you know achieve what i wanted to achieve yeah definitely not the case yeah. but the fact that it looks that way that's pretty dope right so that's i guess sick. i didn't do such a bad job <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah come on but yeah it, it worked yeah. out and yeah. i definitely i leaned on others for sure to make those tough decisions but yeah yeah, yeah. and it's like yeah sometimes you feel lost and it's like literally just like falling into the like doing a trust fall yeah but you're like all right bro like yeah and i think it's also really cool because it's like i'm betting on myself yes yeah oh my yeah okay. talk to me talk to me that's the cool of my goggles oh my gosh yes yes oh my gosh yes oh my gosh yes. yes okay i was literally talking to one of my besties we went out to brunch and we were talking about she's a triathlon yeah. a tri triathlete and she won her first iron man and has been crushing it but she's like do i invest in myself and do i take these really big leaps or whatever and i was telling her there's this one song by j cole it's like if i'm betting on myself i completely double down because it's like if i don't bet on me no, no one's one gonna is. bet on me exactly and so i think it's like it's really like yeah my dreams may seem insane mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. especially when you're kind of in middle school and high school yes. how old were you when you first were like i want to be an olympian like i want to be a Oh, Olympic 10. medal 10 yeah, yeah what about dude. You? same like right around there yeah. I think I was I watched the 2004 Olympics so I don't know how old I was I can do that the math yeah oh, right now. you were 10 I must or have you been, were 9 I was 9 yeah, yeah yeah 9 and I was like Aaron Pearsall looks so cool <laughs> right now like you know and I was like he just had this like essence about him yeah who was like your idol growing up I guess because we're kind of different a bit different gap we have a gap between we do. us yeah and, for me it was missy for sure because yeah. i when i was 10 years old that was when the london olympics were going on i see yeah. and she was just my idol because yeah. i was always a backstroker growing up i didn't i dabbled in butterfly here and there but i was primarily a backstroker yeah and she just embodied everything that i wanted to be yeah wow so yeah it's it's very cool because now like i i don't want to say i have a relationship with her but it's like i know her which is so cool that oh. i've like kind of come full circle and like gone from literally idolizing her for so long yeah. and i still do in so many yeah. ways but to to knowing that she's in my corner and she's rooting for yes. me in my swimming career it's really yes. special but i wanted to touch on what you said yes. um about like the betting on yourself yes right? please mm -hmm. um and i did that big time right like when yeah. i just like up and left school yeah um because obviously that's like a very unorthodox route right? like yes. most people get their degrees 18 through 22 and whatever else yeah and i'm not saying that i'm never going to go back to school again because i want to get my degree and i think yeah. i'll probably go back like starting next fall okay just like, yeah. <laughs> but um i i was taking a gamble on myself right yeah, like i was right. like hey i'm going all in on swimming right now and like yeah. i I can go back and get my degree when I'm 30 years old, but I can't yes. necessarily be a competitive swimmer yeah. when I'm 30, 35 years old. So I just really wanted to make the most out of like this time in my life right now and yeah. capitalize off of it in any way that I could. And I was really betting on me and my swimming yes. instead of just being like, hey, like I'm gonna go, go to with college. the status quo, exactly, like, yes, everything. what everyone, yes. everybody else is doing, yes. yeah, 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 yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And everyone's path is gonna look different, yeah. and. Yeah, some people like should be going to college when they're 18 or some people, yes. some people don't need to go at all or some yes. people should go when they're 40. Like it's just, it's different for everyone. But yeah, yeah I did. I, I definitely bet on myself and kind of took the path less traveled. Yes. And it's working out really well so far. It sure and is. And I feel like regardless of like, I guess if it works out or not, I yeah. think it was like the right choice for me in that time. And so I guess I was betting on like, things physically for me things mentally just like my entire life I was just betting that things would turn out in a way that was just better for you know myself my values oh you're good yeah that's so, amazing yeah, that was my thought process with yeah. all that that's beautiful yeah thank you so much for sharing and it's really cool like your own path is unique to you but the the main standard that that exists is being like I, I need to follow my heart there's literally there's no other option and it takes a lot of like 
fortitude to do that. It's so much easier said than done. Like, oh, yo, follow your heart. Or, hey, yo, just be yourself or whatever. And it's like, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of practice to be like, you know what? This is so, un it's unorthodox. Or, or I don't know many people who've done this. Um, but I'm inspired to do it because I want to do it for myself. And it literally, like, it unlocks something in you. And I feel like people are like freer when they live like that you know when you when you see people who are like really living in their truth yes. you know live living their dream life you can feel it totally it's a shift it's a shift yeah. and like and so I think you know college or not or career or whatever you want to do in your life it's like just you just have to go just all in go all, all in go yeah. all in and do it you only have this one life you do. and you know god willing we have like a lot of time mm -hmm. to like do it so it's like let's just go for it totally. let's just do it and it's been so cool to have that energy on the pro group we all feel it so it's so sick so you were 10 when you first said you wanted to be an olympian mm -hmm. and what was your path like like was that was that standard like betting on yourself like very consistent in your career and was there ever a point where you're like bro i don't know I don't know if I got this, you know, and were you able to, how were you able to overcome it? Like, how was that journey for you? For sure. Um, I feel like it happened two separate times, just specifically with my swimming career. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah how, whatever feels right. Yeah. When I was 13 years old, I was so over swimming. I just yeah. turned 13. I wasn't getting any faster. I was plateauing. And at 13, mm -hmm. it's like, that yeah. sucks. You're so young. Yeah, like, yeah. I feel like when you're younger, it can be easier in a way that you know drop yeah. time at most of the meets you go to yeah. and I just wasn't doing that I wasn't liking it I never wanted to go to practice yeah. and so I had this like kind of come to Jesus moment with myself yeah. and my family and I was like okay hey, I need to make a choice like because I still have this dream of going to the Olympics but like yeah. this is making me happy and so we sat on it for a while and I had to make a decision between quitting altogether yeah. and switching club teams to being on like a board serious team yeah, and being yeah. with a more serious coach um who I then ended up being with until I went to college yeah. um but yeah that was like a tough a tough moment for me for sure because I had no motivation I didn't want to do it but I really had to like look at myself in the mirror and be like I have goals I have dreams mm -hmm. and I want to achieve them so how can I change the situation that I'm in to better fit those dreams right to better yes. align myself with reaching those goals yes. and instead of quitting right that wouldn't have gotten me anywhere mm. i just you know i just decided to change the atmosphere that i was in and it really worked out and the rest is history i guess i moved yes. to riptide i was under my club coach mike parado and he did amazing things with me and yeah i'd say when i was in college too yeah. i yeah. just i was so over it i had this dream for a really long time where i wanted to have a really long professional swimming career i wanted to swim yeah. till i was 30 plus years old yeah, yeah. and going to college made me start to hate swimming again like yeah. I wasn't motivated I didn't want to go all I wanted to do was get the <laughs> heck out of there as fast as I could settle down and like start a family or like get married yeah that's really? all I wanted to do wow. that's all I wanted to do I was so, so depressed I was long distance at the time and I was just like I hate swimming I hate school I hate everything like I just want this to all be over with and so then again, like I had to have another heart to heart with myself after my freshman year and my family as well. And they were like, this just isn't who you are. This just is not at all like who you who you've been for so many years. Like, let's think about this. Yeah. And again, we realized like, OK, let's not just throw this away. Let's yeah. like assess and change my atmosphere yeah. and things will be good. And yeah. so we did. And I decided to make this change, move to Tempe, start yeah. under a new program and I just found a completely brand new love for swimming. It's yeah. almost like the 2.0 version of what I went through yeah, when I was 13. Yeah, I was about 13. to say, very like symmetrical. Very, yeah. very similar, yeah. very similar for sure. Um, but yeah, and so now I feel rejuvenated in a way. I don't want to yeah. stop swimming when I'm 22. I want to yeah. have a very long career I'm in no rush to like settle down, yeah. <laughs> like start a family. Yeah. I was 19 yeah. thinking that like, what's up? Like it's just, it shows like I just was not, I was not with it. Yeah, I, not with it. It's okay. I, mean, uh, you yeah. had to, I had to go through it. Had I think to, yeah, I learned so to. much from yeah. it. And also, if you want to settle down at 19, I'm not, I'm yes. not judging anyone. But for me, <laughs> for me and what I knew my goals were, yeah. that was not, that was not the vibe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm glad yeah. I went through it because it taught me, it taught me a lot. Yeah. It taught me a lot about myself and what I want. And yeah. 
Oh my gosh, bro, thank you so much. I really had no idea it was like that. Yeah. I mean, I knew like a little, you know, because people change because they want that new feeling. Like, yeah. it was similar with me when I moved from Georgia. I was there for eight years. Yeah. And I and I was just like, I definitely need to change because I was, it was feeling stale for yeah. me. And I was like, I love swimming too. I, and I have goals and I really want to like see what I can do and you have to like think about like do I take a chance on myself do I bet on myself sure. or what but I was gonna say like it takes so much strength to actually look at yourself and be like wow I just I just think this is so amazing because it's like you were at a point where you were done, done. like done. done and you were like bro I'm out thank yes. you like yes. I've had my time I've had my time oh. and and I feel like whoever chooses to be done and it feels right to them totally but there, there might be, if there's even that, that like one percent of a little voice that's like, dude, I know you can, I yes. know you can do it. Yeah. I know you can, like you, we've had these goals since we were 10, bro. Yes. And I want to see them through. And, and you know, you don't like kill yourself for it. You find a healthy way to yes. make yourself feel really yes. good about going forward. Yes. And so I think it takes so much strength to go through those low periods and know coming out of them, you learn such valuable lessons. And you learn so much about yourself too. And I think if you're not afraid to kind of look within, you find so much magic because oh you get gosh, to know yeah. yourself more. Oh my gosh. And it's yeah. really cool because it's like, oh, how do I handle my, how do I handle stuff when things are going good? Oh, it's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. How do I handle things when things are not That's going good? That's when you learn. That is That's when you when learn you so much. Yeah. And like with swimming in with life stuff in general. Yes. Like, yeah. Like this fall has been tough for me for sure, but mm -hmm. like, I'm growing so much as a person and that's what makes me so excited like yes. I can tell like I'm getting so much life experience I feel like I've become so much more mature in these past few months mm -hmm. the hard times it sucks so bad when yeah. you're going through it but I yeah. think what helps me get through it is knowing what I'm gonna gain from it and you yes. gain so much from yes. it yeah and and like obviously like when you're actively like going through that hard time the last thing you want to hear is like oh, you're so you're, it's gonna be good. Yeah. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Like, yeah. Really shut up. yeah, 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 yeah. But then once you are past it, you really yeah. do look back and you're like, damn, I'm so glad so that happened. Yeah. Well, maybe not necessarily like glad, but you're like, yeah. this, yeah. this happened for me. Yeah, I saw a video on Instagram that was like, optimism isn't just being positive all the time. Like everything's good, everything's good. When like you know your house is on fire or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. It's it's having the perspective of things are might not be going really well right now so what is this trying to teach me yeah. like this resilience that I think being a professional athlete and going after your dreams is required yes. you have to be resilient I, I'm always like well if this isn't working what can I take away from it totally. what can I learn you know you can do it and it's not the yeah. thing is it's just it's not gonna be easy all the time yes, when just, it is it's dope yes it's so dope when it's not it's okay it's okay it's just it's, okay. Yeah, it's important to just be really honest with yourself yeah yeah. Yes. It's beautiful. Yes. I love it. Yes. Um, let me just get my notes really quick and hey, see if I'm missing anything. Hey. Oh yeah, and when you moved with Mike, mm -hmm. I saw on your Wikipedia that you were nicknamed the Riptide Rocket. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. It's actually. Yeah. Did, did, were you gonna say more? No, that's all I saw. Okay. So you can tell me about that. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's like such a like. It's like bittersweet now. So I got that nickname when I was 14 years old mm -hmm. at Junior Nationals in 2016 okay. at College Station. Hey! Gig em. <laughs> um, and, and the announcer at that meet, his name was Sam Kendricks. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard his voice. Uh, probably, I you pro Yes, you definitely. definitely like, definitely. he's a great announcer. Mm -hmm. If you don't know his name, you know his voice for mm -hmm. sure. And he gave me that nickname. Oh my god! Because um, I, yeah, I was I was fourteen and oh. I won four titles. I think <laughs> I, it was amazing. I was so proud. I'd never won a junior national title before, and yeah. I came away with two IM, hundred back, two hundred back, and hundred fly. Let's and it was go. so cool. And so then he nicknamed me that, and oh. and I've had a great relationship with him ever since. And unfortunately, he passed away recently. He had yeah. cancer. Um, I know, it's so terrible because he yeah. just, he made the sport of something so much better. But yeah, that nickname is like oh, really special to me so just cute. because of the man who gave it to me yeah. and the memories that I have associated because that meet was like one of the best meets of my whole life. It was yeah, so fun. Like so Junior good. Nationals is like such an unmatched to me in terms yeah. of energy. Yeah. Um, maybe, I, I don't know. I've not been. That's no. the I've not been to Junior Nationals, bro. I went straight to like... My first nationals meet was short course nationals in Ohio State. I never went to juniors and I kind of like wish that I 
did a little bit because I, I hear that it's like so it's much fun. So fun. So when you like are able to just rack up titles like that and you mm -hmm. say it's so much fun, how do you get in that flow? Like when you swim your best, what are you feeling? Like what are you thinking or constantly reminding yourself yeah, of? I'm swimming my best when I'm really not that focused on swimming. Okay. Of course I'm focused on it. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to be, right, mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Yeah. But I'm always swimming my best when I'm just out of my head. Yeah. And I always swim my best every time. And it's like yeah. I can I can be like distracted by a friend or something yeah. or honestly maybe I have something else going on in my life that's taking yeah. up more of my mental capacity and so yeah. I don't have as much to put into swimming yeah. mentally yes. which most of the time is a very good thing yeah um yeah. because swimming of course is physical but mm -hmm. a lot of what goes on how you perform is up here and yeah. Um, if I don't have the capacity to like really be thinking about what could go wrong or like yeah. if I'm prepared or all these different things yeah. and I just go out and I kind of swim blankly like distracted with something else yeah. I'm able to do so much better yeah and so I think that's why it's really important to be well-rounded yeah. if you're an athlete yeah. do you think it's important to just have yeah. like other things in your life that bring you joy that fill your cup that take up some of your time yes and not pour everything into swimming mm -hmm. because that just stacks up pounds and pounds and pounds of pressure mm -hmm. and ultimately you can crumble some yeah. people can withstand that I personally yeah. can't yeah. I realized that like during like my gap year um, from high school to college I kind of I was just a swimmer like I was now that was all I was doing yeah and I just collapsed under all that pressure because all I was thinking about was swimming and what my next practice is going to be and what I should eat to fuel for something else. Yes. Things, Am right? I getting to bed on time? Exactly. Yeah. It's just like, it's not that deep. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you can get through life yeah. being a great, successful athlete mm -hmm. while not doing everything perfectly, but just doing your best yes. and not putting too much pressure on yourself to do everything at like yes. such a high standard. Yes. And, and it's not about that perfection. It's, it's not about hitting 100% at practice every day. I think perfection yeah. like leads to you just crumbling. Yeah. And I'm glad that I've gotten to a point where I'm like, okay, like, progress isn't perfection yes it's just showing up and doing your best when you can yes that that is the difference and it's so it's so freeing yeah. to be able to realize that it is um yeah perfection is not yeah. the answer yeah because if you have this thing like hanging over your head like if you don't do this you're it's not you know gonna go your way yes. but you have to remember your human nature yes. that it's like things I'm going to literally be doing my best mm -hmm. and and trust like you, you to you, like I'm looking at myself in the mirror, like trust, yes. I'm going to be giving my best yes. every time. Yes. I'm not going to let you down. Yes. I'm going to do my very best. Um, but it's like, if you are so strict and you have such, you know, stringent, like requirements for yourself, chances are that you're going to crumble under that, like squeeze that you yes. can't breathe under you that literally squeeze, can't you know, breathe. like when the time yeah. comes, right? Yeah. Like when the lights are on, and yeah. it's time to go. Yeah. And, yeah. Because when the lights are on and it's time to go and you're in flow and you're like, I'm having so much fun. Yes. I'm blank. I'm chilling. I know I crushed it this season. I did my very best. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Yes. And let's just do it. Let's go. Yes. And I, when Drew was on the um, episode the other day, we were talking about like doing stuff outside of the pool too. And being a professional athlete about if it's all swimming all the time. And he echoed exactly what you said. Um, because I was on that route as well. That's why I think my like my first two years being a pro were pretty challenging mm -hmm. for me because I wasn't in school. Um, I had my friends, but I was really, the majority that was occupying my mind was just swimming, swimming, totally. swimming, swimming. And I thought that was the way, yeah. you know, and for some it may be, mm -hmm. you know, it's all like up to you. I thought that was the way, but now that I'm like doing other things outside of the pool and I'm, I'm finding avenues to be creative, it's really giving me like a breath. And then when I go to practice, I'm like, I'm present here because I haven't been thinking about it the whole time. Yes. So I'm actually like, I'm so 100% present right now. I didn't waste all this mental capacity, you know, 24 hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you're going out the pool, that's yeah. something I'm still working on. Yeah. But I've gotten so much better at. And yeah. I think a lot of people struggle with it. Yeah. When you're not at the pool, you're freaking out about what your next practice is going to be. Yeah. Like, let's say you have a double that day and after morning practice, yeah. you know that tonight's going to yeah. be a super hard set or yeah. something like maybe your coach hinted yeah. at it yeah. just put it away yeah. you're not gonna die yeah you're, you're just gonna be okay you're gonna get through it it's yeah. like two hours of your life yes and you're more than just a swimmer so go enjoy yes. do what you need to do and yes. then when it's time to come back to the pool then you can be present and yes recognize that it's gonna be really hard yes it is and then get through it yeah but don't waste your whole day freaking yeah. out about it because yeah. at the end of the day 
it's a swimming pool and you're yeah. just going up and down like that's all yeah it's doing. so that's crazy all you do. Like, that's so crazy yeah and of course it's hard to do that like, it's, it's easier said than done easier said than done because it's like wow that is so crazy because i was definitely like when i wasn't ha when i wasn't vibing yeah. when i wasn't vibing and i was totally thinking about swimming all the time by the time i got to practice i was so mentally tapped yes. that if i saw something hard on the sheet just i'd be like what is this? I don't want to do like this is insane. Yes, you get emotional. You know, yeah, you, you get, cry. Or yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, this Angry is crazy. Crying. Like, I don't, I don't want to like. Yeah. What is this? Where it's like now, I see it and I'm like, let's go. go. Yeah, we got this. Yeah, yes. exactly. Because I'm like, I haven't had my focus there, and I think, for for me, it was really hard to to hear that mm -hmm. to be like, what do you mean I'm not supposed to focus on something all the time? I'm a professional athlete. I have these goals of yes. being in the Olympics again. Like, da, 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 da. And it was really hard for me to like let go, but I realized that the opposite was true. It's like yes. once I do let go, I'm actually able to be way freer in the water. Totally. And yeah. I feel like you can have the internal battle of feeling like, yeah, since I am a professional athlete, like yeah. this is what I should be thinking about. And you can feel guilty if you yeah. like don't go all in on it. Yeah. And you're, but in reality, going all in on it is having the balance and having a healthy yes. relationship with it. Yes. But uh, an example of like mm. me not freaking out over a set like yeah. I used to, yeah. like yesterday we did 60 50s, right? Wow. And it was 30 of them fly all out, 30 of them free recovery, but the intervals were all either 40 or 50. <laughs> long this, course. This is long, long course. <laughs> 15 50s fly all out on 40. That's so, just different. That's so different. So easy. No. That's different. <laughs> um, and he, like, two years ago, I literally look at that set and probably cry. Oh, my gosh, yeah. But then looking at it yesterday, I was like, all right, like, shit, let's go. Like, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Like, let's go. Like I'm, I'm a two flyer. Like this yes. is gonna make me so much better. This American is record holder, American record holder, two flyer. <laughs> period, folks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like yeah. don't cry about it. Like yeah. I can understand. Like yes, you can look at the paper and be like, oh gosh, this is gonna burn. This is not gonna feel good. This is yeah. gonna be really difficult <laughs> yeah, for yeah. two hours. But then at the end yeah. of like, it's just. It's just not that deep. Yeah. You're like, yeah. you know what? Like, yeah. this two hours is gonna go by. Yeah. What can I do in these two hours to make me mm -hmm. feel better? Yeah. I don't care if I have the worst practice of my life or the best practice of my life. Yeah. I'm gonna get through yes. this practice. I'm gonna give myself five minutes to maybe think about what I could have done better or what I did great, and mm -hmm. then I'm gonna put it away. Amazing. Because it's in the past. Yes. I love it. Oh, I'm living yes. for this conversation. Yes. I'm living for this conversation. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, even if I have the worst practice or best practice, it doesn't change the fact that I'm. 100% certain of achieving my goals mm. right mm. like because it's like if I would have a if I would have a bad practice I'd be like my my chances are that much less yes or something you, you know freaked up about yeah it. yeah and yeah. now it's like good and bad they all come my goals don't change totally. my belief in my goals do yes. doesn't change either and it's like and yeah you duh. still get so much out of those bad yeah. practices yeah 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 because it's so like much. let's say like okay you're having a really hard time moving I, I mean i've heard this so much i'm sure you have too okay i'm having a hard time moving let me practice four kicks off the wall yes five kicks off the yes, wall or something let me always get something my, my streamline let me let me glide past whatever you know or, or not breathe into my finish or something totally. like that and it's it's these little um, reminders that make you better. And I feel like you're only able to have that mental agility when you are not so swamped. Yes. Like thinking about it all the time. Yes. This is so sick. Yes. Oh my gosh, I was not expecting, I was not expecting this fire. <laughs> um, thank you so much for sharing your insights on swimming. It's no surprise that you've able to reach so many accolades in the international stage worldwide world-class swimmer reagan smith everybody <laughs> um so in looking a little bit on instagram too i see that you post a lot about capybaras <laughs> and i have a little present for you oh my god, oh my god. no baby <laughs> yes i do Of that, oh my I was dreaming of that. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, Reagan is like a huge fan of capybaras yes. and positive affirmations that come with them. So, bringing our first segment, it is story time with Napoleon Beckley. <laughs> I got this book. <laughs> 
It is sleepy, happy, cappy cuddles. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work out. Just it's kind of like way more reading <laughs> than I thought it was gonna be, but oh, maybe wow. you could like show the class. Oh wow. We could like skim it and look at our favorite page okay. and see if there's like, a nice message. Okay, let's do that. We could share. <laughs> Rumpus? Rumpus. Oh, uh, is it's like there's a lot of like animals in the forest. Oh. And they're like, and he always, all he wants to do is cuddle. Oh. Mm -hmm. The turtle's like, cuddle, pff, fat chance. He wants to find someone who can cuddle with him. Oh my god, it's a crocodile that comes yeah. up. Okay, yes, because any of you who are familiar with capybaras, right? All the videos on like IG Reels or TikTok or whatever, you'll see these crocodiles or these gators or whatever they are. They'll be riding in the water and the capybaras will be riding them on top. Have you no, seen No, I haven't. You need They're to like little them. passengers. Yes, like they, the crocodiles don't eat the capybaras. They're just like friends. Oh and, my gosh. And then, and then, and Did then. You know? Are you all happy? Asked the Cappy. It rhymes. <laughs> Very. They all cheered. That makes me happy. Said the Cappy. So she floofed. She floofs. She floofed. I guess. Roar. <laughs> and then the Cappy asked the the crocodile to cuddle. She says cuddle. Oh no! Wait, he seems kind of mad. It's getting really suspenseful. The cro cuddle. The crocodile roared. Me? Cuddle you? But no one ever wants to cuddle me. The cro oh, this is getting really sad. It's sad. Oh, the crocodile is like getting emotional. Right? It's too much reading. No, it's really sweet though. It's so it's sweet. sweet it's so sweet. Because it ends with the cappy and the, the crocodile, crocodile cuddling. cuddling. And, and they, they were, were happy, happy together. together. Oh my god. I don't know what I was expecting. Uh, <laughs> All Reagan does really is slay. Thank you so much. You see it. You. I know you see it. Um, so we end with our final segment, slay or nail. Oh, okay. Okay? okay. Alright, pre-meat nails. Oh, slay. And who has the best? The, like, national team or something. I always have some pretty good ones. You do, you do, girl, you do. Um, Bella Sims yes. always has some fire She does them nails. herself, right? Half the time she does them herself. They're on her real nails, too. Come Bonus on, points for that. On. They're not even acrylic. Wow. Um. Shackle. Alex, Alex Shack. Okay, yeah, she, she and Bella. I'll give it. I could go all day. Like all you right. had great nails at World. Kate did. Alex did. Gretchen did. Her. Literally any girl on that team had good nails. Her. Brian had really cute ones too. But Alex Shackle. Mm, mm -hmm. She like has adult nail artists. Can't hear us. Yeah, she has a whole album. She does. Okay, Parka. Oh, slay. 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 Versus like sweatpants or sweatshirt. Mm, yeah, I like a parka because I don't like putting something over my head. Yeah. I don't know why. I get like yes. weirded out about that. And then like it's caught on your goggles and stuff. Period. Period. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have like an either or, so you can tell me Uggs or Crocs. I know you're a fan of both. Well, okay, I have my Uggs on right now. Mm -hmm. But I've been a loyal Croc stan and I wear Crocs to every swim meet. Yes. I mean, I have to go with Crocs. Gotta go Crocs. But I wear these every day. She does their new too. Every day. Period. Um, but I wear my Crocs every day too, so yeah, I'll go with Crocs. Okay. But I love them both dearly. 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 That's real. Both slay. Slay or nay? Double cap. Mm, that's a recent slay for me. Okay, so recent I've, slay. I've always been a girl who just did one cap and then put my goggles on over my cap. Mm -hmm. But anyone who's like watched me behind the blocks know that all I do is this plaster my goggles to my face and it just gives me the worst goggle marks and it just stresses me mm -hmm. out because I'm thinking about my goggles leaking instead of like my race plan. Yeah. And so at Worlds I double capped for the first time. And it worked? And, and it, it was like worked. took out the fear it of the goggles? It took out the fear uh. of the goggles. I stopped messing with my straps and my knock on wood my goggles never leaked and so I think I'm gonna start doing that more. Her. So Her slay. Um, post race sellies on the lane line. Uh, Cheering. Oh, going crazy. Line. Anything. Yeah. For myself, that's an well. Okay. I want to see you get off of the lane, line, bro. <laughs> Come on. I've never done. Have you? No, I don't. But it's my dream. Uh, I think I, I would have... do like the Federica Pellegrini, like the. Bah, bah, bah. Oh, oh, she doesn't like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's pretty lit with that. It is. I feel it depends on your personality. I feel yeah. like some people can pull it off and make it look so authentic. Yeah. And like look dope as heck. Yeah. Um, the most I've ever done is like pump my fist. I like that. I think there's a there's an aura. About there's a how you can do. There's an energy. There's yes. an energy. Slay or nay? Flutter kick with a board. <sighs> nay. Nay. Big nay. <laughs> Slay or nay? Nose clips. Oh, that's a nay for me. I breathe through my nose when I, I swim know. backstroke. I like to exhale. 
through my nose. Totally. Right? Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm Slayer Nay. Post me warm down. Uh, I mean, I know it's good for me, so it's a slay. It's a slay. But like at the end of a meet. End of a meet. Okay, oh. let's do end of a meet warm down. Okay. Yeah. Big big nay. Big nay. I never get it. When you're done, yeah. you're done. Once I leave the water after my last race, that's it. That's it. That's it. Slay or nay pre meet routine. Oh, that's a slay. What is yours? Actually. Let me, like, slay with a grain of salt. Okay. Because I'm a big believer in being able to roll with the punches, right? Yes. Like, let's say you have your pre routine and you're like, can I get to the pool 90 minutes early? I listen yeah. to some music. I stretch. I get in for my warm-up an hour before race time or whatever. I get yeah. my tech suit on 25 minutes before race time, whatever it is, and then you're good to go. But let's say, like, oh, traffic was really terrible that day and you show up to the pool an hour and 10 minutes before your race when normally you'd have an extra 20, 25 minutes and yeah. you're freaking out and you're spazzing and you're like, oh my gosh, like, how yes. am I supposed to race now? Like, yeah. my race routine is screwed. And I used to be like, that's so bad. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to, I think having international experience has really helped with that because yeah. things never go as planned internationally. Yes. yes. You just have to go with the flow and recognize that your race routine is probably going to look a little bit different every single time. Yep. And so I do like having a routine, mm. but I'm also, I'm very flexible. That's so yeah. important. Yes, that is like such an important quality to have. So at, at Pan Am's right now, the village mm. is an hour away from the pool. Yeah. So you, you got to start, you have to roll with the punches. Let's say there's mad traffic like in a European city or whatever, and it takes you, yeah, like an, an hour to get hour? to the floor. Yeah, an hour. I know, and let's say like the cold tub isn't working or something or whatever, you know, post, post meet or something. Yeah. You have to know that this one day is not going to overtake an entire season of cheer training. No. Yeah. No. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Slayer Nay dressing up for Halloween. Oh, Slay. Um, Slayer Nay trick or treating? Oh, that's such a slay. Such a slay. Oh, I miss trick or treating so bad. Me too. The last time I had trick or treating was in sixth grade with like. Oh. All my little girlfriends, yeah. except for everyone in middle school, is like so catty, and so we had this giant blowout fight. Really? Like ten minutes into trick or treating, no. and then I went home crying. No, what did so, she do, girl? What did she do? Oh, so, <laughs> mm, mm. But yes, yeah, so I've been trick or treating for real since I was like ten years old. So Damn. maybe we'll go this year. Maybe we'll go. Yeah. Um, Slayer, nice scary movies. I like scary movies, but then I literally can't sleep at night. Facts. Like I have nightmares. I have to sleep with the lights on. I'm convincing myself that like something's like gonna come get me facts so they are really entertaining yes but i struggle with them like what, yes. do you like them do i like don't them? yeah yeah like i'm in to, bed and then i'm terrified i want to like them i want to be kind of spooked yes i i want to be like but then i'm in bed and i'm Literally. like if my feet aren't covered by the covers You're like terrified. someone's going to get my feet yes <laughs> like when i was 15 years old i watched it for the first time no and i was having these horrific nightmares oh, i literally had to, go, I had to sleep with my mommy oh my god and i was almost 16 years old i know so anyways yeah wow i, I do you like monster house have you seen monster house no is it like mad scary? No. Oh. It's an animated. Kid. Okay, it is kind of mad scary. I won't oh, really? lie. But it's it's a classic Halloween movie. Oh. Yes. Watch Monster House. I, I. Good. Um, Slayer Nate, checking for, uh, checking for monsters under your bed. Um, I'd rather just be ignorant about it. Okay. Honestly, if. I, I would genuinely convince myself that there are monsters under my bed, and then I'd be like, "Well, I can't look because, like, what? Do you, what, what do you, if I like, make eye contact with yes, a monster? Let's yeah. say you just go mm -hmm. and check for monsters under your bed, and yeah. then you see what are you gonna do? Yeah, what what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah. So I'd rather you might as well just let him have a little nap. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. Um, Slayer Day candy corn. Um, I don't hate candy corn, but I wouldn't pick it. Okay. So it's a neutral. Hmm. Stroke the mustache. Mm, 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 mm. Slay or nay, kicking to 15 meters. Oh, slay. Big slay. Slay! Big slay! That's something we both love to slay. We love to sure. slay that. Well, Reagan, what? Like, I cannot believe we've been here for an hour, like, talking about everything from swimming to capybaras to oh, yes. kicking with a board. Deep stuff, too. Deep. I had so much fun. Thank you so much for being the best co-host oh, I could ask for. Uh, we miss Jay, but Jay is in. Ten, ten, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. So thank you so much. And don't forget to vote for Pedro. <laughs> Bye.